Isaiah 1, 19 and 20, If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Today's message, Israel, your time has come. I'm going to read to you some scriptures in Deuteronomy. You've heard these scriptures, but many of you maybe not have taken some of the things that said to heart. Literally, God, God gives us the details of what Isaiah was saying when he says, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. Deuteronomy chapter 28 gives us these details of what we are about to see. And I'm going to tell you something, folks, listen to me. What you are about to see, I have been saying for the longest time since I've came onto YouTube. Go back to 2016. I've given the details and I will talk about that in a minute. But I want you to hear some things that some of you are going to have a hard time with because you're being told one thing by mainstream. Some of people are saying out there and I hear it all. We're about to see the Ezekiel 38 war. But that's not Armageddon, they'll tell you. That's what they'll say. But yet at the same time, they don't, they don't realize if they keep reading, it takes you right into the millennium. Did you hear what I said? Ezekiel 38 war doesn't stop and then go into the, and with another war and then go into the millennium. No, it's just the war and you move right on to the millennium in chapter 39. What happened to this pause, folks? It's where there's supposed to be Ezekiel 38 war, one war, and then these other things that mainstream says are going to happen, which is why they say it's not Armageddon. Doesn't even relate to Armageddon. Because there's other things that are supposed to happen the mainstream says. <laughs> and then Armageddon happens. Listen to me, folks. Listen to me. Or listen to what the Word of God says. Let's start in, start in Deuteronomy chapter 28. We're going to start at about verse 47 where he starts getting into the judgments, the curses, the plagues. Verse 47. <laughs> speaking to Israel because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies with which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want or lack of all things. And he shall put a yoke upon a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. This is God, folks. This is what happens. This, these, these are the plagues or judgments that's going to come upon Israel if they don't serve him. You, you, no, you hear the word of God. I keep sometimes I say, you hear me. You listen to this for a minute, please. The, verse 49, the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far from the end of the earth as swift as an eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue shalt thou not understand, the nation of fierce countenance, which thou shalt not regard the person of the old. Oh, you hear, listen, I'll say it again. Verse 50, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. Does this sound like anybody that we've seen recently upon Israel? I'm going to skip. I could keep reading, but listen to this. In fact, I would like you, excuse me, I would like you to read about the plagues and the, and the judgments to continue reading. But the Lord gives a summation to this chapter. Some of you are going to have a hard time believing this. This is even scripture because this won't make any sense. And I'm going to explain it to you. Please listen. Please listen. Listen to scripture, not always to what somebody else says they think. Listen to this. Verse 63, and it shall come to pass as the Lord, as the Lord rejoiced over you to do good. You ever been happy when you're doing good like to your kids? I don't know if some of you are, how old you are. It makes you so happy or whether your spouse or whatever, you're doing something for them. You get all excited, don't you? You give them, give them a gift. You want them to open the gift before they even want to open the gift. <laughs> you, know, you get excited about it. And I'll say it. And it shall come to pass that the Lord shall rejoice over 
that as the Lord shall rejo- rejoice over you to do good, sorry, and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you. And to bring you to naught. And ye shall be plucked from off the land where the thou shalt go to possess it. Hear this. This is scripture, folks. This is God. And I know some of you, God's going to rejoice to bring his people to naught. I got some stuff to tell you. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all the people from one end of the earth even to the other. And there shalt thou serve other gods which neither thou neither thou nor thy father fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease. My spirit is hurting right now. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing and the failing of eyes and sorrow of mind and the, and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee and thou shalt fear day and night thou shalt have none assurance of thy life in the morning thou shalt say would to god it were even or i wish to god it were evening and in the even or in the evening Thou shalt say, I wish to God it were morning. For the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear and the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. I've tried to explain some of this, folks. I've tried to explain what this means. I've talked about here recently, and I'm not going to get back into things I've already taught about, but I want to explain briefly that I have said what's happening right now with Israel. The anti-Semitism that's going throughout the earth in the various nations. Right now, the stage is being set. Demonic forces and angelic as well are going here and there, covering their bases of what is about to happen. It is not coincidence that hatred towards Israel, that anti-Semitic behavior is popping up everywhere. Why? Because Israel is about to be scattered among the nations. I just is hard to believe. Let me tell you something that happened to me a few days ago, just about a week ago. I was praying for Israel, as we're supposed to be. You're supposed to pray for the peace of Israel. And right now, I would say they needed it. This has only happened to me four, I can count four times this this has happened to me. And each time it has put a fear. I'm going to give you two tests. Listen to me, folks. You're going to want to hear these stories, testimonies. I'm an old, old fogey. I'm 61 years old, have had decades with God, and I've seen every, I've, I've touched hell and I've touched heaven. I can count about four times this has happened, and every time it scared me, it scared me. I was praying for Israel. God have mercy. God save lives. Get the hostages out. All this stuff scares me now. I knew then my prayer was being rejected. Literally being rejected. God was going like this. And you say, God would never do that. That's not scripture. God literally knows at times, depending on how we've been, and for whatever reason, there's various different purposes as to why he'll make the heavens brass. He shuts the heavens, he closes his eyes and his ears, and he will not hear you. Regard, and it has only happened to me four, I believe, four times that I can remember, and every one of those times has scared me beyond belief and has put a fear into me that I'm like, what in the world? Because it, it, it comes out of nowhere. You're like, I'm talking to a God that's going like this. I will not hear you. I'm not, you, you, you can talk to, he, you, would, you would be better off to talk to, to somebody else who was actually there because God is literally closing his ears and his eyes. He will not hear you. He has made up his mind and determined. <laughs> uh, and I know it doesn't, it just sounds crazy. And some of you are going to reject this, but I'm going to tell you folks, listen to me. We are coming to a point in time 
that is already wrote, much like your Bible, from start to finish, from the first word to the end, you cannot alter. You cannot change it. God is here, folks. You can't change it. No matter how much you want to pray, how much you want to fast, God has made up his mind on where Israel's going. It scares me now that he is determined and purposed in his heart, no matter how much we have prayed and fasted and asked for his mercy upon Israel and to watch over them. You can we, we can pray all kinds of things over people, folks, and mercy and God, you know, save them and bring them to you. And at some time, at some point, a person, I've seen this repeatedly, a person must change. Their time is up. Do you hear what I'm telling you? I could give you story after story after story, and they're on the top of my head right now. To where I've watched people come to a crossroad to where time was up. That it was time for that person to change. Your prayers were done. It's time for them to change. Or they're not going to fulfill their life and where God would have them or their call. Because everybody has a purpose and a call. You have a purpose different from somebody next to you. Though you may be a part of the same body. You have a purpose. There are intentions that only God could give you and birth in you and and you can reach a point in life to where if you make the wrong decisions, he says go right and you choose for whatever reason to go left. You can lose it. And I can tell you story after story, folks, I'm telling you the truth. People close to me, I've watched have, have happened to them. I watched a tragic one. I'm not even sure why I even bring this. I don't even know that I even need to, but a tragic one was my former pastor. He rejected something and kept rejecting and rejecting. And God took him and he was a young tyke as far as I was concerned. About my age, whatever. You don't die at this age. His church today is a... Is, is, is in an entertainment show as far as I'm, because he's no longer there. His wife didn't know what to do with it, and now it's just a show. I'm not, I don't want to talk about I can tell you stories where I watch people that didn't do what they were supposed to do, and you reach a point, and, and, it, and you've either done the right thing or you haven't. You've either moved. I've had points like that in my life. I've had two times in my life, two times. One was sin. The other was simply a point in time where I had, I had decisions I needed to make that had nothing to do with sin, where God was gone. One was a year worth of, I don't, don't, I don't know why, I'm not, I, want, I don't think I even want to get into this, but it had to do with Daniel and cancer simultaneously. God was calling me to a higher point. It's a whole other testimony, but I couldn't find God for the life of me. And I needed to make some decisions and I didn't know it. Another time was sin. God was gone. Israel is at a point to where God has already already determined to bring about his word on what's going to happen with Israel. And when I prayed just a week ago when I was feeling God was going like this. Sorry, don't talk to me. Don't tell, don't, I'm, I have determined I knew it. It was, a, it was a very fearful, scary, only again, four times that I've ever had, two times I've never, uh, God has left me or whatever. Four times I've, I've entered into a prayer that he was rejecting. This was a rejected prayer. I'm telling you today, Israel is going to be kicked out of their land. Ezekiel 38 will happen. But again, it's not as mainstream says. That war, as I've told you since last year, this war is just going to keep going and go. Listen to what's happening, folks. Israel's pounding everybody, aren't they? 
let me give you to what, what God wants. You can pray for Israel all you want, but I don't know if you're, how sensitive you are. I'm telling you that it's, this is already determined. The word of God is already wrote. You can't pray it away. You can't alter what he's already determined in the word. You can't change prophecy. His people are going to be scattered, as it says in Joel, before every, every mainstream teacher looks at Joel as Armageddon that I'm aware of. And yet they're not realizing what Joel 3, 2 says. That these people before Armageddon, his people are scattered among the nations. What do you think that, do we think that really happens in one day? Come on, folks. Why does God bring this about? Because of what he says in his word. Are you hearing me? He says it in his word. And, and what he wants is not, not your prayer of mercy anymore. I'm telling you what the Spirit is, is, is let, I'm telling you. This is determined. It will happen, and it's not long from now. They are going to be overran. And what God wants is not your prayer, but he wants it from them. And as reads in Joel, if you want to go to Joel, Joel 1, verse 13, gird yourselves and lame it, ye priests. He's talking, about, is talking to Israel, not you, not to me. How ye ministers of the altar come, lie all night in sackcloth, ministers of my God, for the meat offering and the drink offering is withheld from the house of your God. Sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God, and cry unto the Lord. He wants, he wants Israel to do that. The time has come for them to turn. Chapter 2, verse 16. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, and then that suck the breast, let the bridegroom go forth to the chamber, and the bride out of her closet, let the priest and the minister of the Lord weep between the porch of the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord. And give not thine inheritance to reproach, and the heathen should rule over them, that they should say among the people, Where is their God? This is going to have to come from Israel, folks, and 18, then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people who have been scattered, according to the next chapter, among the nations. We have reached a point. You don't get, we, you and I, do not get to alter what's about to happen. And right now, if you're paying attention to what is going on, Israel's pounding everybody around them. This is going to lead to a point that that I have said since I have since I have came on to YouTube and took every kind of flack that you can imagine, every kind of name calling, some I could never ever even repeat to you, much less have you read. Not without offending people beyond belief. You think I'm kidding. Some of you are new to this channel. You've not heard what I've been saying since I've been on. I'm going to give you a brief synopsis, and I want you to hear something. Hear, hear me. I'm going to show you a video that I did in May of 2022. Not, not October 8th of 2023. Jerusalem's going to be attacked, sorely attacked, severely attacked. It's going to be so devastating. This is not going to be anything like Israel has ever known in modern history. In fact, it's going to be so bad, and here's the word, she's going to be removed from her land. And I know you're hearing other things from other people. Now they are going to be removed from their land. They are going to be killed, pillaged, raped, sold, and exiled. That's a word. Now, I'm also going to tell you the next one. And here's where it brings me back to the first one. Our president is going, our administration is going to turn their back on Israel. We're going to turn our back on. Where we could go in and repel the enemy, we turn our back. An end. That's, that's prophecy number three. We turn, our president turns her back on Israel and we don't help them. And I got to tell you, that makes us guilty as sin. You, when you could have done something and you do nothing, 
I mean, it's like the watchman on the wall that has to be able to warn Israel. All he has to do is just warn. We could do a whole lot more than warn. We don't do anything. We, we help them, and, we, and, and I think we take some into refuge, but, but, but the goal is to let them get out of the land, and then the land is just simply fought over. Israel's removed from land. Now, here's what brings it back to number one. And here's where I start getting involved. What president does this? Prophecy number three. Jerusalem's U.S. embassy shall be laid waste. It shall be desolate, void. All U.S. personnel and military presence. That is a word. This is what makes this prophetic. You're hearing the very wordings that I said that, that go back to when I first came onto YouTube. We would turn our backs on Israel. That has to do with part of a word that God told me about Daniel chapter 7. I'm not going to get into that here, but that's where that Israel would stand alone. The alliance that America and Israel have shared and enjoyed is going to come to an end painfully painfully in the not too distant future painfully it's going to come to an end and israel the lion is left to stand alone specifically jerusalem coupled with that would be that the present administration would turn their back on israel and we are now in the process of turning our backs on israel and that's not even peaked yet folks Biden has looked the other way on iran and gaza for years it's been a strategy of appeasement and that doesn't work in this region this region it feels like we're turning our backs on our friend right now and they need us the most and you know, we spent a lot of time helping Israel, but you can really feel the frustration from Netanyahu that these closed door conversations with the United States are just not going well. Israel wants Hamas destroyed once and for all. The Wall Street Journal out with an op-ed uh, titled Biden protects Iran's nuclear program, writing this. This is the thinking that has led to the collapse of U.S. deterrence on Mr. Biden's watch. Enemies rely on him to come to their defense by restraining allies from responding to aggression. Mr. Biden did not even wait to keep Iran guessing. The Biden administration is denying Iran's claim that it may receive $6 billion in frozen assets in Qatar. The Treasury Department announced after the October 7th attack that the funds would be frozen indefinitely after being freed from South Korean banks as part of a prisoner swap, Brett. But, you know, everyone's scratching their heads asking, why are you allowing $6 billion to be available to Iran after ignoring the sanctions and enabling Iran to generate billions of dollars in oil revenue, which they've used to back these terrorist proxies, Hamas and Hezbollah? Is that the way you see it? That's exactly the way I see it. Israel also has wanted to strike Iran's nuclear site for years. I mean, this has going, been going on for a while. They have watched... Iran increase its program, and they really haven't done so mostly because we have the U.S. State Department telling Israel not to and that there are these other methods for stopping Iran's program. However, those methods have failed. Don't attack Iranian oil sites and don't hit their nuclear program. And this is what we, the United States, are telling Israel don't do. America's Secretary of State and Defense Secretary sent a letter to Israeli leaders warning them that they have 30 days to seriously improve Gaza's humanitarian aid crisis or else Israel could face a U.S. arms embargo. On CBN's Faith Nation, Brad Bowman of Foundation for Defense of Democracies says the letter does real damage to Israel as it's fighting deadly enemies on seven fronts. So this is very very serious. This, I would say, is not unlike your best friend being surrounded by six or seven bullies on the playground getting kicked, and then you come up and instead of giving your friend a hand up, you join the kicking. This is uh, not too far from that. I'm going to give you a little trinket here. Listen to me for a minute. Israel will hit at some point 
Iranian oil sites, and the nuclear program. But one day it is going to happen, and when that, when that takes place and those <clears throat> missiles hit Iran, you, there's going to be a huge growth of anti-Semitism, and everybody's going to blame Israel on the price of gasoline. Why would everybody blame Israel for the price of gas? How do you blame Israel for the price of gas? Well, if Israel strikes Iranian oil sites, which is estimated to be at least 3% of the global market, oil price, and you say, it's just 3%. No, 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 no. You don't know how other... That will impact pricing astronomically, even though it's a measly, sounds like 3%. You should look up the economists that are talking about this. And, and gas prices, weren't they somewhere there, they were skyrocketing at some point? So I remember I, I remember at the end of my vision, and you have to realize I'm, I'm telling people this back in 1978, but I, I knew that gas somehow during the beginnings of what I saw happen, that gas prices would be hovering between seven and eight dollars. That's right? crazy. I, even, I, even today, it just doesn't. Yeah, I mean, I, that's... gas was you know, you know, sixty cents or something like that back then. And I remember there was a, that stuck out in my mind when I came out of that vision that gas prices would be across America between six or seven and eight dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, to say, so between seven and eight dollars when when these things began to happen, and so. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like that is kind of a little bit of a timeline to yeah. what people need to be looking toward. I started mentioning this a minute ago. Israel is hitting all the surrounding Islamic terrorist factions, nations, Gaza, Hamas, Lebanon, Hezbollah, hitting Syria, places on, on Iraq, which is Al-Qaeda, Taliban, Yemen, the Houthis. You hear me for a minute. Listen, what does this mean? It's hitting, they're hitting everybody. The Middle East is on edge as Israel plans its response to Iran's attack with 180 ballistic missiles earlier this month. Military and political leaders reportedly have the targets. But Iran is threatening a much more severe counterstrike. One general says openly the Islamic regime could kill all the Jews of Israel. That land is a small land. It's not even as big as one of Iran's small provinces. If we will, we can obliterate all the Zionists. And you're watching them die off. What do you do? Turkey said, Erdogan said, unite. Iran said the same thing, unite. Israel's even attacking Iran. The threat of, of all these factions being wiped out, the, the belief that peace and safety finally will come, Israel's not going to stop no matter what we said. They're going to go it alone. They're going to do it on their own. Regardless of what we want, they're going to take everybody out. And what do you do? What do you do? If you're them, what are you going to do? It's going to happen, folks. They're, who has left before they're all wiped out? They're going to unite. And they're going to come against Israel. And the very things that I've said, and coming from their supposed big brother, Israel, the United States, their big brother, we're going to tell them to stop, as we've been saying to stop. Victory will be, 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 be that close able to almost be touched. They'll be able to taste it. And I'm telling you this administration, as I, as I saw along, it's, it's in Joel chapter, chapter 3, verse 2, where the nation is split. It's been divided. I prophesied this in 2016. You saw one of them. Two, two months later, in December, Obama made sure that UN got to vote again and we abstained from the vote and, and UN Resolution 2334 was implemented that put Israel, as far as the international community is concerned, back to pre-1967 borders and Kamala is even on board with that too. She's a part of the same administration. We want, the, I don't pretend to know the details, but all we have to do is back off and say, go ahead, go ahead and, 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 and invoke 
international law and we won't do anything if you guys stop the war all in the name of peace because this administration even Kamala and ultimately I remain committed to a path forward that can lead to a two-state solution and I know right now it is hard to conceive of that prospect but a two-state solution is the only path that ensures Israel remains a secure Jewish and democratic state, and one that ensures Palestinians can finally realize the freedom, security, and prosperity that they rightly deserve. All we have to do is say, go ahead and implement it, and we won't do anything. And you will watch Israel, Jerusalem specifically, be overrun. I firmly believe that a two-state solution, that the establishment of a credible Palestinian state uh, serves not just the interests of the Palestinians and delivers their right to self-determination, it is also in the interest of Israel and delivers the security that Israel needs and deserves. Uh, and the fact that is, uh, the current government in Israel doesn't realize that, of course, is a matter of extreme concern. Uh, uh, and I've said before that we must move towards, and that's, I think, one of the issues we discussed today and we're trying to work towards, is building a momentum to reinvigorate the two-state solution uh, independent of Israel's uh, uh, position because Israel doesn't get to decide whether or not the Palestinians have a right to self-determination. So we hope uh, sincerely that uh, the leaders in Israel will realize that it is in their interest to work with the international community uh, not just to strengthen the Palestinian Authority, but to est finally establish a Palestinian state along the 1967 borders, as everybody understands, uh, is the right thing to do. Pre-1967 borders. What a thought. Because we've already got the pathway made for this. Joel, where God is going to bring everybody down to the Valley of Jehoshaphat. You know what happens? He gets jealous for his land because his people have been scattered through the nations. They've gone captive taken into captivity, God gets jealous for his land because we've parted it according to what he says. UN Resolution 2334, I'll put that down below. All settlements after 1967 are a fragrant violation of international law. All Trump or no Trump, all somebody has to do right now according to the international community because UN Resolution 2334 is international law and it is us parting the land of Israel. It's already the beginning, the green light and where this is going to go. That's what I want you to see. The pathway is already being created, folks, to where we are being taken to. And it ends in Armageddon. Spoken at a time pre-October 7th, at a time when, the, when, the, when Biden wasn't even in office, during a time of the Trump presidency, you're witnessing things that were spoken when they made no sense. And now you're getting to watch how all of this makes sense this will happen i know it now based on, i know it it is determined and you can't alter it you can pray that they figure it out and come to their knees because god is going to require of israel they are going to have to get under their knees it's their time thankfully we know the end god will have mercy but not before his word comes to pass not before now let me get in to the updates and everything that's happening, I want to tell you, folks, listen to me. I have one more message I'm going to give you before the election. You do not, oh man, you can hear for any messages you want to hear from anybody else. I don't care who you want to look. You can listen to other people. I would advise you to listen to my message before the election. I got one more to give you before it. You say, well, why not any more before? Because I'm doing things. Listen to me. Let me give you two updates that I told you. One, the cancer, PET scan and blood, blood work showed no cancer. Everything great, except the blood work revealed that my kidneys since chemo have not rebounded. They are in the state that they were in during chemo, which explains why I've been suffering the symptoms I've been suffering. Today, I'm, I'm, I'm doing, doing somewhat better. I'm somewhat coherent. Folks, believe me, it gets bad to where I, I don't function right. I have rebounded mostly in every area. But my kidneys need prayer. I'm taking everything I can th think of and that I've learned that benefits kidneys. And this is a process. But as of, as of only the blood work, 
they were the same as during chemo. So I need your prayers. God can heal cancer. I think he can take care of kidneys, but I need to do certain things in order to help. And I am. Okay. Two. I'm in the process of building a church. I don't know if you looked, I've got bruises everywhere. I mean, I, I've had my wrist was really bad. It might even be a different color on the video. Anyway, it's, it's basically healed. Excuse me. I'm building a church. It's going to be called <clears throat> Doorstep. It's taking a lot of work. In fact, I may give you some video of all the supplies that are in and, and, and everything that's coming in. Um, this church has been because of, and everything is basically because of, I want to say this, folks. I don't talk about the raven, but today we are here because of the raven. The raven goes back to 2017. Do you know that's how long the raven has been sustaining this ministry? Can you imagine? Never wavering, never failing, faltering, faithful. Has made things happen that, 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 that the majority of you are, are completely, absolutely unaware of. And he doesn't want me even really to talk about him. And I, you know, I'm going to, this needs to be talked about and how things work. My opinion. But without the Raven, we aren't here. I know some people say, well, you sell books. You know, folks, on a, on a good month, the last year or so, whatever, if five books go out, you know, we've done a good month. I know some of you think, are they selling books all the time? You're, you're, that's, that's inaccurate thinking. That's not true. Not sustainable. There are people that are faithful to this ministry. I can count them on one hand that have been there. God bless you people that have been there, that give and sustain this ministry or help put towards the ministry, but the, they aren't sustainable. In other words, without the raven, the lights go off. Nothing gets, there is no church. And I asked, let's get back to the church. I asked the raven, I thought I counted all my, I found I thought I counted all the bases for this church and everything we think we need. But but in the end, when you start doing stuff, you say, oh yeah, I forgot this and I forgot that. And oh, I know I'm going to need this. And you never thought thought of that. And that's basically the way construction and, and things go when you try to build stuff. You run into this. I want, I'll probably show you there's a hundred chairs, beautiful chairs. Praise God for the raven. Beautiful chairs. But I want to, I forgot, I want, I want a Bible per chair. That's what I want. I want 100 Bibles. Bibles aren't free. Those chairs just didn't drop down out of heaven, folks. They didn't. The raven made that happen. They have all the equipment that's there, and I, gotta, I have to build. I'm not even hiring anything out because I want to save as much money as I can. But I know I could ask the raven for more money and don't. I'm talking to the raven. There are minor things that I need that I would like. I would like to have a hundred. I would like to reprint the graph. I've done updates this year. The folks you didn't even know about it. I put in the Yom Kippur War. It's relevant to the 69 weeks. I want to do a hundred of the graph. I want to do a hundred of uh, Daniel. I put it there. And there's other things. There's certain things. I, I didn't think of a platform. Certain stuff that I need that I would like. It takes about a one to 2,000 more and we could be done. And I don't have to ask for the raven to help. You folks, you can minister. You can minister. I know some of you give elsewhere, but yet you feed here. You dine here. You get truth here. The graph you never would hear. Folks, well, you want to know what's going to happen? Let me give you something real quick. Churches are about to be in disarray. I'll say it one more time. The churches that you're aware of are about to be, here's the word, in disarray. They will be playing catch up, not understanding where they are. Whereas I will be, this church will have, I don't know how I'm going to show you, but there are preps, food, blankets, bedding, you name it. I have already, God has already advised on what to get, would not. This ministry will not be playing catch up, nor will you be left in disarray, wondering what's coming next. I'll tell you what's coming next. 
If you've been blessed with the graph, I'd ask you to contribute to this work. It's not free. When extra money comes in, we get we get better microphones. We get better lighting. We we throw we get buy different stuff that this ministry needs. But if that money isn't there, we don't buy anything. There's nothing to buy. I mean, I, I the lights. I want to keep on the lights. See, I want to have internet. Do you know we need a door to the studio? That's got irrelevant from the church. I'm not going to tell you what's wrong with the door, but I need a whole new door. <laughs> but I, folks, your money, if, if, if you want to bless a ministry that's giving you solid truth, to, you're blessed and you want other people to hear this, whatever is able to be done, we take that and that's how we use it. We don't get a second car. We have no second. We don't get a, we just get what we can and then we do what, is extra for the ministry. I want you to know that. So that's that. I've, I've put it out there. If you have not because you asked not, I'm t- I'd rarely do this. Some of you could sow into good soil and you'll be helping. I promise you, you will be helping other people and it's for a good cause. Don't miss my next message. She hates Israel. She wouldn't even meet with Netanyahu when he went to Congress to make a very important speech. She refused to be there because she was at a sorority party of hers. She wanted to go to the sorority party. She hates Israel. If she's president, I believe that Israel will not exist within two years from now. And I've been pretty good at predictions, and I hope I'm wrong about that one. She hates Israel. At the same time, in her own way, she hates the Arab population because the whole place is going to get blown up. Arabs, Jewish people, Israel, Israel will be gone. Kamala Harris will support unlimited migration from terrorist hotbeds into the United States and will totally abandon Israel. You're going to be abandoned if she becomes president. And I think you have to explain that to your people because they don't know it. They have no idea what they're getting into. You're not going to have an Israel if they become, if she becomes president. Israel will no longer exist. Look for the next message. Look for more to come, folks. Until next time, take care and God bless.